all over the world and stayed at all these really cool, luxurious places. But I'm curious if you've ever had any situations that were a little sketchy, especially going overseas. I was in Indonesia. There was this, um, this temple on this like little island you could see um, kind of a little further out to the bay. Of course, me being my adventurous self, I'm like, I'm going to swim out there and see what's going on. So I swam out there like, I'm a decent swimmer. I'm not amazing. I was on the swim team, but I was fine. But when I got all the way out there, I was already pretty tired. There was no kind of easy um, access from like the water up into the staircase. I had to literally like start free climbing this like jagged rock wall where all these waves were clashing next to me. A giant wave really just like swept me up and like perfectly plopped me uh, on top of this little ledge, this platform. I was like, oh, sweet. So I chilled there for an hour. Then when it really got bad is was, was when I came back. I didn't want to just like jump or die because I couldn't tell where rocks were I like, freaking break my leg I literally had to like just sit on the edge of the ledge basically as far as I could and wait for a giant wave to sweep me off and it was really scary I caught in a rip tie a couple hundred yards away like not even close to the beach I came to and I went under the water at least three or four times and eventually I just changed course and kind of went to a different um, beach that was just closer and thank God I got there today I have a man who has traveled across the globe and stayed at some of the most luxurious hotels and Airbnbs across the country and the whole world. He's also a marketer, an influencer, and a content creator. Please welcome Mike Ionetta, aka Mike Will Travel. Hey everyone, how's it going? Doing doing great, man. Glad to have you. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> so, uh, you know, probably tough to catch you between trips. I actually catch you at home. Yeah, it's well, 2020, it's been different for sure. But normally, pre COVID times, I was on the road like eight, nine months out of the year. So now it's uh, I've been in my little hometown, New Jersey, now for about six months straight, but starting to slowly and safely get back on the road now. So, man, is, is that weird after being gone for so long, actually being in one place for six months? That's yeah, really weird, not gonna lie. <laughs> it's really weird, especially like being back in my hometown because like I was born and raised in this little town in Jersey my whole life. And then I feel like I'm like back in high school now or, or something. It's super weird. So I, I kind of hate it. <laughs> because from what I saw, you started traveling in like college. So it really is like back in high school for you because it's been so long since you've you know been back home, it seems like. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I started to kind of more seriously travel uh, in college for sure. So I went to, uh, to Fordham University in New York City. Um, initially, I started like on finance and hated that after one class and switched to marketing. And now I'm here. But yeah, I really got into it like my, my third year, my junior year. I um, had a study abroad program. And, uh, and yeah, I just kind of used a uh, strategy to kind of land some free hotels and like just get major travel discounts. And I basically, I think I traveled something like, like 10 weeks consecutively to like 10 different countries at one point because I was in London. It's so accessible. I was just bouncing all over the place. So um, it was a great time. <laughs> Man, that's awesome. Was that kind of your first experience traveling at all? And you kind of... Uh you know, caught the excitement about it? Yeah, not my like exact first. So I had a very um, interesting upbringing in the sense that it's just kind of the polar opposite of the type of person I am now. So my uh, family, I love them to death. And we just kind of take kind of casual like um, road trips every summer and like, you know, lake houses. So again, I'm from New Jersey and we just go like, like Vermont, New Hampshire, you know, and stuff like that. Um, I never really went anything like too crazy. Probably the biggest one we did was like Hawaii one year when I was like 10. Um, and then like Los Angeles a couple of times, but basically all domestic, nothing like crazy outlandish. Um, and I was like, I was a scared kid, man. I really don't know why growing up. Like I honestly started off hating travel. Um, I think it was a combination of turbulence. I had like a bad experience when I was young on a plane and that scared me to death. And then I was five, six years old when 9-11 happened. So then I think that combination of being like, oh, there's turbulence and oh, you know, terrorists are going to hijack my plane. Uh, I was scared, senseless of ever traveling again. So I didn't travel that much. Probably my first international trip I recall, I visited my sister who's three years older than me when she stayed abroad in London. And I was like, I don't know, 16, 17 years old at the time. So was my first real trip man that's crazy and uh 
for those that don't know, you're super young, right? Like, when did you just get out of college? Yeah, so I'm 24, and I, I graduated last May, uh, May of 2019. Nice. And uh, so I don't know how much people know, like, listening to this about your story. I've gotten to see uh, your YouTube content and learn about you. So, um, so feel free to kind of add on to whatever I <laughs> lay out here. So you're in college, figure out that, you know, going the typical route, typical nine to five, uh, working in finance, I wasn't going to be for you. And Mm -hmm. you figure out that you can actually get paid or hotels can pay for your travel. Like how did that part actually get started? Because that's Mm -hmm. something I didn't even think people did. And, uh, I don't think many people are aware that, you know, you can use your influencer and marketing abilities to, you know, pull something like that off. Mm -hmm, For sure. Yeah. So kind of my first uh, major step into that space, uh, my sophomore year of college, I'd actually left college at that time. Like I I dropped out a little bit to pursue this uh, business opportunity. Um, This like big investor took interest in a project of mine at the time. And I basically dropped everything to go and pursue that. Um, and at the end of it, that didn't end up uh, working out, but it was an immense uh, learning lesson for me. And then on the tail end of that kind of six month period for me, I was honestly like really lost. I was, um, I had two of my businesses at the time uh, completely fail and I was just like unhealthy. I had lost my grandpa, my business partner had a falling out. I was a complete mess. So I was kind of just searching like, okay, what the hell do I do next with my life? Uh, and eventually, like, I was honestly just kind of spitting out a million different emails, trying a million different things to see if anything would stick. And at the time, one of the things I was trialing was this weird, like, like marketing boot camp thing, which I was not even remotely qualified to be teaching. I have no idea what I was trying to do. But I somehow um, decided to, like, email hotels in Europe. And I got in touch with this one hotel uh, in the Swiss Alps. And it's this luxury four-star hotel. And um, they initially were like, sorry, we can't afford that. And I don't really know where I got the idea from, but I just like randomly replied to them. I was like, okay, like no worries, um, but would you guys pay me $500 per month to manage all of our social media? And at this time, I was, I think, 21. Keep in mind, I had no portfolio, no experience in this industry whatsoever, like nothing going for me. And they're like, sure. I was like, wait, really? They're like, yeah. And like, and they decided to hire me. I was no idea why. So I is a bit of a luck for starting out. And um, those guys are still a client of mine to this day. They've been a client of mine for four years. Um, I owe a lot to those guys. It's this family-run hotel in the Swiss Alps. So that's how I kind of like my first paid client. Um, kind of honestly out on a whim. And then right after that, about six months later, that's when kind of my study abroad experience started. And that's kind of how the whole timeline. Uh, you know, kind of latched up together. And then I was abroad. That's when I started, you know, meet with a ton of these hotels. And I started to land um, more, uh, more paying clients, um, you know, throughout that period. So that's cool. How, how tough is it to market on behalf of companies all over the country? Because I can't imagine you market in the same way as all these, you know, hotels in different countries, do you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, every single hotel, there's so many variables that go into it, man. I mean, everything from like, how big is the hotel? Is it a corporate one? Is it a boutique one? Where is it located? Um, so like, there's not an exact answer to that question exactly. Everything's just so different. Um, but probably one of the biggest things like what I always ask is like, you know, like, what are your top markets? I mean, like, where do the majority of the people come that visit your hotel? Like, what countries do they come from? Um, and is it like a leisure or is it a business, um, you know, property um, that that's a pretty big one. So, um, yeah, it hasn't come easy. And I've kind of expanded my skill set, to be honest, I kind of just started out like like most guys my age in the space being like, ah, I'm just Instagram guy and I'll grow your account, which everyone freaking does. And it's, there's really no value. Anybody can do it now these days. Um, so now I have really in the past year kind of doubled down, like, what can I do? differently from everyone else differentiate myself and how can I have credibility in this space and that kind of thought process I think has led to my success so yeah so is your personal brand really a big part of that is that something you'd consider a big factor in in your credibility 
Absolutely. So I would say, honestly, probably like 80 to 90% of my clients have come through my personal brand. Um, so, so just to clarify, this is important. I, I don't get paid directly just to like come stay at a hotel and do an Instagram post. Um, that's not how it works. Um, that's r- incredibly rare in this industry. We have the only people that get like directly paid just to like, you know, chill with a cocktail and snap a few photos are the people that have like millions and millions of followers and like massive networks. Um, the way I get paid and how I built my career is I would stay there for free. And then I would also, as a part of kind of like my offer, which differentiated myself, I tell these marketing teams at these hotels, be like, hey, I also have a background in marketing. So at this period in time, I had about two or three clients, still kind of knew what I was doing at this point, but it's not 100%. Um, and a lot of these places had no idea what they were doing because they're mostly kind of boutiques and kind of run hotels. And they would take a meeting with me and we would do some work together. And then eventually, say a couple weeks later, I get them as a paid client. And that's important because, you know, it's not like a one time thing. It was like a monthly recurring client. And most of my clients I've had probably, I'd say, an average for about like two years or so. So my clients tend to stick around, which is nice. So, man, yeah, that's a good sign <laughs> being able to keep clients. So, and you don't have to give away uh, any secrets, you know, when, with your pitch or anything like that. But when you're coming and approaching a hotel to potentially work with them, how does that start? And how do you get that like first free trip and start of, you know, and start to build that relationship? How does that begin? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So one thing I'll say, um, I always cold email. I don't typically do DMs. The reason why I do cold email is you can attach hyperlinks there. You know, Instagram DMs, it just will look super messy and it's tough. Uh, so do hyperlinks. And basically, my goal with my email I sent to these companies, I was actually just sending out some emails right before I hopped in this call, um, is my goal is like not make the person who's receiving the email have to leave that email. I'm like, go search me up on YouTube or look me up on Instagram or Google me. Like everything is right in that email. So I literally have like probably more than 20 hyperlinks on my email. I'm not even exaggerating this. So it's like, I have this amount of followers and here's a past client of mine. Here's this and here's that kind of like almost borderline overwhelming in their face. Um, so I think that's really important because it's so many lazy proposals and I get them too because I'm on the receiving end as well because I manage some of my, you know, hotels, um, clients, like DMs and emails, stuff like that. And people are just, you know, downright stuck up and, you know, egotistical. They'll say, yeah, give me your best suite for like three weeks and it's absurd. Or they'll just have like a super lazy pitch. We're like, hey, I'll do a post for you. Like, thanks. And it's just like super lazy. Um, so, yeah, it's just have hyperlinks and, you know, you know, info to, to back up what you're saying. Don't just toss it out there. So, yeah, totally, man. There's so many lazy proposals out there. So, say a hotel then receives this email, they're like, okay, I'm interested in working with Mike, we'll travel. Mm-hmm. The first step then, they're just open to you coming out and staying at their hotel for free and kind of getting a feel for it. Is that where, you know, the business aspect really starts? Yeah, I mean, honestly, almost every single hotel, they like straight up just reply to me usually within a day or two and like, hey, we're interested, maybe like 20 or so percent, like want a phone call, but I've been able to like, you know, convince them on the phone. If I can't do it on email, I can definitely do it on the phone for sure. Um, and yeah, then it's I meet them in person. Just This is just not just my, this is business in general, man, because like once you meet the other individual in person and you, you shake their hand and they have a name to the face. Like it becomes so much easier to close them and, and make a business transaction because they have a name to the face versus just, you know, emailing someone or talking to them on zoom. So I found just kind of having that personal connection ha- has moved me for wonders. Cause again, I'd say about 90% of my clients, like I mentioned to date, had come with me first staying with, you know, that place in person. And then I meet their team and I stay in touch with their team. And then eventually I, 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 Hey, this is what I'm thinking. And I land them as a client. I do not think that would have happened. Definitely at least not the same amount of clients I have today, but hadn't first met them in person. So you got to build the trust. So, yeah. Yeah. It's great. I mean, that, you know, applies to not just this niche, but really all over the place. And, Man, I, I so relate to uh, the laziness of proposals. I've seen so many bad ones. It's it's crazy, you know. They'll either uh, just drop in a comment or um, 
have you go and do the research and it's like you don't want the prospect to have to do all the work right i mean that's that's yes. more of your job so it's crazy mm -hmm. and um so then just uh taking another step here you're you know you're succeeding in this space at what point did the personal brand aspect of it really start? Was that toward the beginning of this or did you have some success first and then decide to really push for the personal brand? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say probably the the last option. Like I think what kind of made me realize because when I was first starting out, I was trying to figure out how to brand it. I was like, do I brand as something separate? And for a time I had to call like hotel social. And it's just like, you know, physical agency, you know, and stuff like that. Um, but I learned over time that as soon as you say like, hey, I'm an agency or you just you come across as more corporate, um, you know, the walls go up, you know, uh, all the people speak, speaking to you versus if I just say like, hey, I'm Mike, I'm this cool dude and I take photos. I want to help your business. Like, again, it's just you can make such a better connection than like, hey, I'm a marketing agency. I, you sound like a robot. So the way it really happened for me was about not almost three years ago now, maybe like two and a half. And uh, this when I was this is like one of my last trips to study abroad. So I was a junior in college at this time, and I stayed with this one Sheraton hotel in Dubai. I was with my buddy Rob, and I got this like crazy penthouse. Got like the best room in the hotel. Um, they really liked me for some reason. I had and I definitely didn't have as many followers or credibility back then. Like I have, what like fifty thousand followers now. I maybe like not even half that at that time. But for whatever reason, they gave me that room. And uh, I took like a really, really cool picture um, from like the roof of that hotel. And I had like on the deck of my, my room and I had like a reflecting mirror and this like Ferris wheel in the back, like really kind of interesting photo. And um, the official corporate Sheraton Hotels Instagram page decided to feature that photo. And so that like instantly gave me credibility right there. And I, I still to that to this day um, use that and kind of like my one liner. I was like featured by Sheraton Hotels. And so, you know, it makes so much more sense to be like, yeah, Mike was the one that was featured, not like Hotel Social. It just doesn't really add up. So, yeah, it was kind of that first feature. And then I got featured by like Manon Oriental featured me and then a few other big hotels. So um, I really then kind of used that credibility to my advantage. And that was really, I think, when my career kind of um, progressed when I got those features. So, Man, that's that's so smart of you because yeah man agencies and you know seeing like you know a business hop into the dms or an email people immediately put up those walls so i mean do you think you wouldn't have had as much success if you named it you know what you do like you know mike's marketing agency versus mike will travel yeah, I, I definitely, I think I, I did the right thing there. Um, Cause again, like I, I've had, I've like consulted for other agencies or helped out friends who have agencies. And yeah, just, it's just, especially if you're trying to go the cold email route, like you're just going to get next to no responses. Um, I, I really believe that. Um, it's just, it's just like I said in business, try to be as principal as possible. Even like in my email signature, I think it's a little cheesy, but I have like a picture of myself in it too at the bottom. Cause like, you just want her to know that there's like a human being behind this other side, not some like, you know, virtual assistant spitting out emails or a robot. So it's like, as soon as you kind of go that extra mile, I think you can really improve any business out there. So, yeah, man. So what has 2020 been like? Obviously a lot of uh, restrictions are up in place now as far as, you know, flying and different hotels. Mm -hmm. It looks like you've been doing a lot of Airbnbs, but is that where the main focus has been for 2020? Yeah, it's it shifted a lot, man. Oh man, 2020 has been a roller coaster. So I started out this year, and my number one goal for this year was the YouTube channel, which it still is today. And I started out in February, and March. I took a trip to Scandinavia. Um, I went to Norway and Finland, and at that part when I was like just getting to YouTube what, about seven, eight months ago. Um, initially, I was thinking, I'm just going to showcase unique hotels. And when I did all my research online, I found like there's a huge kind of concentration of these unique hotels in Scandinavia uh, for some reason, mostly like ice hotels and igloos, you know, and stuff like that. And that's, that's where I went. So uh, I went to Scandinavia, I did that. And, uh, and that was a really important trip for me um, because that kind of taught me 
that that channel direction um, was not a good long-term solution. So what I mean by that is initially, again, my plan was I'll just showcase unique hotels. But after I did like like 50 freaking hours of research, I realized there's only really like 70 or 80 unique hotels. So that really like, kind of like wow factor um, mm -hmm. in the world. And they're so spread out all over the place. Like I go broke just traveling, trying to get to them. And like, th this is not enough. Like even if I shot every single one, I run a content, you know, like about a year and it's, it's not sustainable. Um, but then the last trip, uh, to, I was working this large hotel and I, at this point I was kind of honestly getting sick of breaking at the hotels in a collaboration perspective because, um, it, it just, it felt, um, you know, everything. I felt like I was, again, I had a boss because I had to meet with their marketing team the marketing team put together the schedule. I had to be here and there. And like, I felt like I was still reporting to someone, which I hate, I hate having a boss. Um, and so, um, yeah, I just working at the hotels, again, it wasn't sustainable. And I remember the last hotel I was working at, it took me like the course of three days to shoot one video. Because again, I had to wait to like check into this place and then do this tour and then do that. And so it also just took forever to shoot a video. I was like, I got to switch something up here. And I remember I just, for some reason, I was, I was dreaming of going to South America, which I was supposed to be where I was supposed to be right now. And I was searching up like um, stuff on Airbnb. And I discovered, I'm not sure how new it is, probably in the past like, year or so. It's not super, super new. But there's like, a feature in Airbnb where you can search for unique accommodations. And you can search for filters such as like tiny homes and container homes, which is like really cool stuff. And when I searched that within like five minutes, I was searching the country of Colombia, which is the first place I was planning on going in South America. I found like like 50 properties. And I was just like, why the heck am I not doing Airbnbs? And so that's kind of what, what led me to this current path. And then when, when COVID hit, I mean, I could talk about that for ages, but just in terms of YouTube, um, I was like, I got to stick just to Airbnbs in the Northeast where I'm from. I'm going to say domestic this year and just kind of focus on what's safe and just kind of shoot these like isolated, socially distant Airbnbs. So the, the strategy shifted, but I think it's paying off. So I'm happy. No, man, those Airbnbs are so cool. Like some of those A-frames you've been at, it looks, it seems like a lot recently have been uh, like upstate New York and kind of similar area, man. Mm -hmm. Some of those are so cool. So I can imagine it'd be pretty easy to get some content from those locations, but are you able to generate any money working with Airbnb or how's that working? Yeah. So I'm still, again, like relatively new into the Airbnb space because all my background has been in hotels, but I said, okay, like it worked for me last time. I'm going to use like the same process. Um, and again, I landed on my first paid Airbnb client like two months ago. Um, actually the guy I shot in upstate New York, the like, really cool, like two story tree house and that a frame cabin with the rollout bed. Uh, he's one of the coolest freaking dudes ever. His name's Chris. He's an incredibly talented carpenter and, and businessman. And he's, he hired me and still I'm doing it right now for him. I'm doing some marketing for him. And I got a nice little gig going with him. And I was only like maybe the, the third or fourth place I ever shot. Um, so I'm still, you know, learning. I'm still new to this industry, but I think there's a lot of potential there, um, especially because I've been seeing this shift coming for years as people, even without COVID, it was already still starting to shift towards Airbnbs and more unique and personalized experiences. So I would love to eventually kind of shift to having more Airbnb clients because they're also just, they're more interesting and more fun to work with too, to be honest. So um, yeah, I found some initial success. I hope it continues. Yeah, that's super interesting, man. Where, uh, where all in the US have you gone for Airbnbs? Has it been mostly like Northeast? Have you gone uh, out my way, Midwest at all? Yeah, so mostly, uh, mostly northeast. So I did one road trip uh, about a month ago, uh, one in July, and I did uh, mostly upstate New York, and I think like one in Pennsylvania. And then, like I mentioned, I'm going to New York starting tomorrow, actually. But then the talent of that trip, I'm doing another road trip to the northeast, and I'm doing um, upstate New York again, but kind of slightly different section. And then I'm also going into like Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Um, so kind of my goal is basically this is kind of the last trip I think we'll have in, in the Northeast because I've kind of exhausted all the unique ones, I think. But I'm seeing like nine different places. Um, there's a lot to see over there. Uh, then after that, my plan is I'm heading over to Los Angeles uh, and Joshua Tree 
um, hopefully is knock on wood if it's still safe. Um, you know, got to be smart about these things these days and, and ethical and, uh, you know, and do the right thing. Um, but hoping that I can go there um, more like October, November. So that's the plan. Man, it'd be awesome. You're flying over the Midwest, though. What's the deal? There's nothing <laughs> cool out here. <laughs> Uh, just, I just, I've gotten to the point, like, um, the Midwest is cool, but the Northeast as well, like they're, they're too spread out right now. And like my upcoming road trip, it's like very, very logistically heavy, meaning like I'm literally staying, I think at one point in like five different Airbnbs and five nights. So I have to like crank out all these shoots and then drive here and drive there. It's just a lot. <laughs> um, versus the reason why I'm choosing LA and Joshua tree is if you never heard of Joshua tree now, it's about. Um, two hours east of LA and it's like in the desert and I have no idea why but it has just like the the largest concentration anywhere in the world I found so far um, of just crazy insanely unique Airbnbs and I'm like not even exaggerating this when I say like I found like over 200 unique Airbnbs that would fit to my channel um, so yeah I'm, de I'm definitely planning to hang out there in October I was actually just emailing some of them um, before I hopped on here. So that's the plan. Man, that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. So you've gone all over the world and stayed at all these really cool, luxurious places. But I'm curious if you've ever had any situations that were a little sketchy, especially going overseas. Have you mm -hmm. gone to any locations that uh, had you worried at all or, or anything like that? Yeah. Um... I haven't been too many situations, you know, I've been like, you know, fearful of like my safety or my life or anything like that. Um, you know, I've like gotten, you know, like sick a few times off of, you know, eating local food and stuff like that. But probably, probably the one that sticks out to me the most, and this is honestly all my fault. Like I was kind of just being an annoying tourist, but um, I was in Indonesia um, in this, uh, this island called Nusa Penida, which is like near Bali. There's, you know, the more popular one everybody knows, but it was at Nusa Penida. I went to this like really cool, uh, like beautiful beach area called uh, called Crystal Beach, and uh, and there were no signs, or there were no lifeguards, and not there was anything issue there. There's nothing wrong there, but there was this um, this temple on this like little island you could see, um, kind of a little further out into the bay. It had this like gorgeous like spiral staircase, and this is like gorgeous temple at the top. So of course, me being my adventurous self, I'm like I'm going to swim out there, see what's going on. <laughs> um again there are no signs there's like no one telling you not to do it so i was like all right like, let's go and so i swam out there like i'm a decent swimmer i'm not amazing i was on the swim team but i was fine but when i got all the way out there i was already pretty tired and i realized um there was no kind of easy um access from like the water up into the staircase because from the angle from the beach where i came from you, you can't really see around the bend and so i re i had to literally like start free climbing this like jagged rock wall where all these waves were clashing next to me. Um, and I was like getting on my, my ankles and my, my leg cut out. I was about ready just to go back. I was like, screw this. Cause I gotta conserve my, my, my energy. When there's like, a giant wave, like just like swept me up and like perfectly plopped me uh, on top of this little <laughs> ledge, just platform. I was like, Oh sweet. Um, so I chilled there for an hour. It's just like really cool. Um, you know, uh, was a temple and everything and a gorgeous view. I could see out to the whole ocean. Then when it really got bad is, is when I came back. Cause then I started, I was like, all right, I'm tired. I want to go back to the beach now. And for starters, there's no easy way now back down into the ocean. So I was like, crap, how do I do this? And I didn't want to just like jump or die because I couldn't tell where rocks were. I like, freaking break my leg. So um, this was like one of the most mentally scary things I've ever had to do in my life. I literally had to like just sit on the edge of the ledge basically as far as I could and wait for a giant wave to sweep me off because, you know, I had the power to basically fling me out into oh, the ocean and avoid the rocks. <laughs> and it was really scary. I was like, shit, man. Um, so eventually that happened and I was fine. But then the, the worst part is I got caught in a riptide. Um, and again, like I'm a decent concern, but at this point I was just, I was just tired, man. Like I've been rock climbing. I've been swimming for like 30 minutes I was exhausted and I got swept like really far out, um, like totally like a couple hundred yards away, like not even close to the beach I came to. And I went under the water at least three or four times. I like, that's the, the one time, honestly, I can say like I feared for my life and I'm really not trying to be dramatic, but like I seriously like was like scared shitless at the end of this. Um, and eventually I just changed course and kind of went to a different um, beach that was just closer and thank God I got there. 
And it sucks because uh, it, it was so shallow. There were rocks everywhere. It was jagged. And so the big waves kept coming behind me, like throwing me face first on top of these other rocks. And like, it wasn't that bad. I was just cutting up my hands. It just, it sucked. It, it was not a fun day. And the last thing I'll say about that, and I'll show this is a long story, but <laughs> is, um, is my buddy, I had posted a story on my Instagram right before I went into this, this beach area. And uh, a buddy had replied to me to my story, but I hadn't checked until I got back. And he, it was my buddy Willow. And he says, uh, he goes, whatever you do, man, like, do not go swimming at Crystal Bay. And I replied back later. I'm like, why? He's like, I was there with my girlfriend and two tourists drowned to death the day I was there because oh. they're swimming out to a temple. I was just like, holy crap. And so that blew my mind. Yeah, no life, like no signs, no like the Indonesian government didn't care at all. And people die there all the time. So it was kind of effed up. But yeah, <laughs> that was good. <sketchy>. Man, <laughs> that's scary. Shout out to your buddy too. He's trying to help you, but. Mm. miss it <laughs> yeah no they, they couldn't even find me man like I, it was, yeah it was, my, it was my friend and and she later she was like i was already to call for help but i couldn't even find you for like 30 minutes i just got swept like so far away than my original path so it was really scary <laughs> yeah Not oh fun. my gosh yeah that's yeah, terrible <laughs> you had to have been a pretty good swimmer though fighting especially the waves like it's, this isn't a normal pool yeah yeah no it definitely was not. i i'm again like i'm decent but like my form is awful so i just get tired like really <laughs> quickly um so yeah, i was i was exhausted i wanted to sleep for a week after that i was so tired oh yeah man oh i can imagine Jeez. <laughs> so what uh big goals do you have for yourself you know you made it pretty far at this point already which is awesome what's like the next big step or two that you're looking to take mm-hmm yeah, so it, it's definitely YouTube, man. Um, I, I want to be doing that full time. Like I said, right now, I'd say my time is split probably 50 50 between YouTube and just my agency. Because yeah, right now, my agency, like I'm making no money off of YouTube. You know, so I just started that, obviously. I haven't monetized it yet. Um, so all my income is coming from my agency. You know, I just want to do YouTube, but obviously, I keep paying the bills. So my goal is I mean, yeah, I want to make it full time and within the next year. Like, um, I really want to do this full time. Um, I would love to get to like 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That's a goal of mine. It's a stretch goal. I'm trying to be ambitious. Um, cause that's when you can kind of first really get sponsors, I think, and begin to monetize a little bit more. Um, so I love to get to that point. Yeah. Just, just get it to, to full time, uh, you know, relatively early next year. I love to do. Awesome. And, uh, so you got your start in marketing first, but then like, at what point did you realize you wanted to focus more on the content? Like, have you always also been behind the camera and, and things like that? Or did that just kind of start recently? Yeah, no, I'd say um, I've kind of always had a creative mindset to it. I probably attribute it to um, some of my first business partners. So I haven't mentioned it much, but actually my first ever, ever company was in high school. And it's this really cheesy like clothing line. Um, and so, uh, you know, for the clothing line to promote it, we had obviously like take photos. And that's when I kind of first started to get um, around a camera a lot. And then like my second business partner, when I was more in college, um, he was definitely more creative than I was. And he had a camera and I eventually, you know, bought that off of him. And then I really kind of got into photography more. And I just realized, you know, it's kind of a complimentary service or product, you know, and I kind of framed it like, hey, I'll, I'll take the photo for you or I'll take the video of the content. But what I'll do that's different what most content creators don't do is I'll then properly promote it. So you actually get either followers or more bookings or more website visitors. So, you know, cause it's one thing you just take a pretty Instagram picture and you say, all right, cool. You know, they got a thousand likes, but what does that mean in revenue for the hotel or credibility or visibility? So like very few influencers care enough to even mention that. Um, so that's kind of a, something I've taken advantage of. Yeah, it's, it's super complimentary. That's those skill sets go hand in hand if you're able to handle some of the more creative sides as well as the marketing too. So that's perfect. Yeah. Um, so do you do all of it yourself on the content side? <laughs> so, uh, I'm capable of doing it all by myself. Like I have a tripod and I just be done it plenty of times, but I prefer not to. <laughs> um so yeah I, I have um plenty of creative friends um 
it's been tough for me because yeah like where i went i went to again the fordham uh college and it was like the most uncreative school ever in the history of humankind because it's just like everybody there again great people but like 80 i think it's like i don't know 60 70 percent um of uh people or business majors in my school are in finance or marketing or accounting and so everybody's just like money 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 wall street wall street wall street that's all they cared about so i had almost just no really um, creative entrepreneurial friends, um, you know, in college, I had to really kind of branch out on my own to do that. And now I have a pretty strong network. And I'm happy with that. I would still love for it to be bigger. Um, but yeah, I'd say I probably have like a solid like three or four friends that I try to um, bring with me on trips whenever they're available. Um, obviously, that varies. Um, but yeah, it's maybe like 50 50 me taking the photos, friends taking the photos. Nice. <laughs> so you have such an interesting uh, career path at this point. Do you think anything you're currently doing could be replicated for those listening? Like not necessarily even in the same space, but how do they go about kind of creating a path for themselves? Uh, just in general career advice, the, the biggest thing I can say is like, you just got to try a million different things when you're young and find what you're good at, find what you love and then stick to that because I can't tell you, I've had probably close to a dozen businesses fail. I've interned at some really crappy companies. I absolutely hate it. I've held jobs I hated, um, but I wouldn't get to that point until I did those things first to realize, hey, this isn't for me, or hey, this is maybe partially for me. How can I take it a step further, um, you know, and get to that point? So, you know, especially I know what the kind of general demographic of, of your listeners are, but like if you're in college, um, just take internships, like do internships or some of the other best advice I'll say to you is like find or make a list of like the top five or the top 10 people you most look up to, you know, whoever that may be in your space. And again, cold email or cold call or something that actually I think works incredibly well is to shoot a screen share video. I've used this strategy as well a lot. So again, I'm all about being personable. And there's like software out there called like Loom and plenty of other ones out there, Zoom, if we're doing it right now. And it's just a screen share video, like, hey, what's up? You know, I'm Mike. I love your company or I love you because of X, Y, Z reasons. I want to help you out. Um, and then again, you have your face, you take the initiative. It's really going to help you out. And just hit up these people you look up to me. Hey, like just offer like, can I work for free? Can I intern for you? Can I be your apprentice? Whatever it may be. That's exactly what I did. And I worked for this um, this guy I really look up to. His name's Conrad. And he's one of the coolest freaking dudes ever in the travel space. Um, and uh, he's in his 30s now, but he's been featured in like every single publication imaginable. And he's he's been called like the, the modern day Marco Polo by Forbes and, you know, all this stuff. And so he's just crushing it. And I basically want to be who he is when I'm his age in like 10 or so years. Um, I did the same exact thing. I, I hit him up and actually started when I like DM'd one of his Instagram accounts and I offered to work for free for him for a couple uh, months. I did that. Then I worked for him on a paid basis for part time. And now I'm consulting for him now. And we still have a great relationship and he's a great mentor and a great friend. So yeah, uh, just, just get busy, man. <laughs> get busy. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So what do you have uh, coming up on the horizon? What can people look forward to seeing? Yeah, so um, so YouTube wise, like I mentioned, I have um, at my New York City series. I'm gonna start uh, shooting tomorrow. So uh, I'm staying uh, again, taking advantage of all the good hotel deals, how cheap they are. I'm staying in one of the most iconic hotels in New York City uh, for only a hundred dollars per night. Uh, I got a crazy deal on Expedia, um, so that'll be a cool one. I'm also um, gonna come with a luxury apartment uh, tour. I think I mentioned. So I basically reached out to a bunch of realtors and said, "Hey, can I showcase some, you know, some of your apartments?" And so I'm showcasing this like twenty five thousand dollar per month apartment, which is insane. Um, so I'm doing that for the New York series and a bunch of others, and then I'm doing my road trip uh, in the Northeast. I said and I'm shooting like nine different places, everything from some more tiny homes to tree houses to wacky cabins and stuff like that. And then later this year is, uh, is hopefully the, the Joshua tree series. So, um, yeah, lots of, lots of YouTube videos, man. I'm excited. Yeah. Lots of stuff. That's awesome. Are you seeing like even just the average hotels or average Airbnbs out there? Are they all pretty cheap right now? 
honestly, like, yes, uh, across the board. Um, you know, especially, you know, Airbnbs, though, I will say, um, are definitely, like, way, way more booked than hotels. Also, keep in mind, like, it's only, like, you know, one property that only have like, one room. It's not like a hotel with, like, 100 rooms. So, yeah, they're cheap across the board. But if you do want to book an Airbnb, obviously, be smart about it, be ethical. But, like, do it, like, now. Because most of like the top, the good Airbnbs, they're booked up for the next two to three months, I'm finding. So like, I'm planning out my trip to LA. It's going to take place mostly in November, now in August. Like that's like how far in advance I'm like planning it. So like keep that into, take that into account. So <laughs> Awesome. Man, I'll be following along. I'm sure uh, some people will be listening and start following you along as well. I appreciate the time. Of course, man. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Awesome. Mike will travel, everybody.